Hello my friends, my name is Rick. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be doing part two of how I made a heavy duty metal melting foundry. If you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to do so. And uh, with that, uh, let's get started. We're going to be doing this out in the back. Sorry, honey, I'm taking over the patio. I'm on a mission. <laughs> and there we have it. There's the foundry. We want to re first up. We're going to be talking about all the added features, and uh, the first one is this fold-out table. I've seen a lot of videos on on uh, different uh, foundries, and I think that uh, having a table connected to the foundry is going to be very helpful because you could put uh, a variety of things on that. Uh, you know, tea, coffee, beer, uh, but <clears throat> really more importantly is uh, you know something to put uh, a tray for collecting slag so when you have to pull that out of the crucible um, you have a place to put it it's close by and I'm sure I'll find a, a number of uses for that the other thing I needed was uh, this handle made out of three quarter inch square stock it slips into a, a one inch square tubing and that's uh, terrific for moving that around and then once I built that uh, I put this little bracket together that you can uh, mount to that handle with a few magnets and that's going to hold my pyrometer That way I can, uh, it's an easy setup. I can just quick look at it uh, and monitor the inside temperature. And there's the uh, thermocouple coming through. I had to drill a hole for that. And then the tooling. There was a number of, a number of tools I needed uh, for this and uh, took some time to make. Uh, first up was the spoon I'd use for slag. <clears throat> so a lot of slag floats to the top of the metal and uh, you got to get that out somehow and so uh, I'm going to need that. The other piece was a plunger. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to push uh, down into the molten metal uh, some uh, some borax, if you will, to help uh, you know, to help you know weed out the uh, the impurities. Next was this pouring tong. So something that I can, you know, something sturdy that you can pick up the crucible with, lock it in, and uh, you know, pour the molten metal into the various molds. So that turned out pretty nice. And then of course this uh, <laughs> lifting tong, which was a little tricky to make given all the different angles, but uh, it turned out pretty good, and uh, I like it. And that's pretty heavy duty and. It's going to hold up well. All right, in terms of insulation, if you know, if you remember, I'm using soft white insulating fire brick up to 2800 degrees Fahrenheit rated with three coats of refractory cement. That turned out pretty well. And in terms of, because it's a square uh, foundry, I cut some angled fire brick for each of the corners so that it would create a vortex inside the uh, inside and help uh, help create some even heat around that crucible there's the top lid that's two and a half inches thick with the refractory uh, with the fire bricks and then of course the coating you know in terms of a tip uh, I would dry out your white fire brick uh, perhaps in an oven uh, before you add the refractory cement because that's going to help you uh, limit the bubbles and cracks that can occur once it's uh, as it's drying. Uh, just a quick note on the propane. I run two propane tanks and uh, that goes a long way in preventing you know ice over. I don't know for any of you who've worked a foundry or a, or a forge you know that uh, you know if you're running one tank there's a good chance it's going to freeze up. With two tanks it doesn't do that. 
The other thing I picked up was a Harbor Freight infrared laser thermometer. And uh, this is a new item from Harbor Freight. And uh, boy, it works great. I love it. Uh, and it's reasonably priced, about 50 bucks. But uh, you can measure, now the inside temperature right now is showing you know, 1550 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, as I'm measuring the outside, the outside temperature of this, uh, at the bottom where there's quite a bit of insulation, it's only 79 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, so that's good. Midway up is about 194 degrees Fahrenheit. And, uh, and without any insulation, that particular loading tube is uh, running at about 515 degrees. So the insulation is working. All right, let's do a first test run with uh, aluminum. Now, before this test run, I had to make some molds, and I used some 4-inch channel. Just cut the channel and then weld it on two end plates, uh, three, three 16 inch thick end plates to them, and, uh, and they should work out well, as long as they're warm when I pour the metal into them. I don't think it'll stick. So now we got to light this baby up. And with this, you're going to get to see the, uh, the vortex that's created inside. Here comes the propane. Look at that. That's cool. I'm very happy with that. It is rotating around and it'll rotate around the uh, crucible uh, to provide even heat. So uh, that worked out. There we go, sparks, call 911. <laughs> there's another look at that, uh, at that heat circulating around. That's gonna work out perfect, I think. All right, it's time to load up the crucible and, uh, and get this uh, show rolling, get this test going. We got some cans that have been crushed. About five uh, bagfuls of cans have been crushed and uh, ready to go. We'll see how much uh, that generates. Go. We got the top on. And now these uh, furnace is up to about uh, well, close to 1800 degrees and uh, it's really chooching. Now I've, at this point uh, all the cans have been loaded and melted and now we have just a quite a bit of slag on the top floating. So I gotta get rid of it. <laughs> and I was surprised at how much slag there was. I've heard uh, from a variety of people that uh, when you're melting cans, there, there is quite a bit of slag, but I still think there's uh, eh, some aluminum got caught up in that, which is okay. I can break that off and use it uh, some other time, remelt it. But having that uh, table and tray there is, uh, is quite convenient. There I'm adding some borax to and using my plunger to drive that down into uh, to the bottom to help draw out more slag. That worked out pretty well. And we're just getting any last slag and okay, here we are ready for the pour. Got those lifting tongs, they work good. And now we're in for the pour. It was a lot less than I thought. I uh, I had expected more volume, but uh, but that's okay. It's uh, I'm learning as I go here. So here we are back in the shop, and uh, I was it was uh, the pours came out nicely from those uh, from those dyes once uh, from the molds once they cooled. So that worked out well. And there's the. Uh, the main ingot, if you will. 
It turned out nice. There we go. There's the slag. Gosh, looks like the makings of a big necklace or something for my wife. Boy, she'd love that. <laughs> so I'll try to recycle some of that. Okay, guys, well, listen, that's it. Thanks for watching part two here. If you haven't seen part one, I encourage you to do so. Hey, listen, to support the channel, please like and subscribe. And, uh, and of course, we'll be back again here soon with another video. Take care. Bye-bye.